You can do it horizontally as well, but ma- Ugh, focus. Hey you, my name is Elian and welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. Today we're in Zagreb, that's the capital of Croatia for people who don't know. It's a pretty beautiful city and we want to go take some photos, but just, we're not going to just take photos, we're going to do a special photo challenge, which is using this phone as an accessory to make some more interesting photos. Now generally there are two categories that that falls in under. You can either use it as a frame, as in put a picture inside this and then take a picture, so it's like a double composition type of thing. Or you can use it as a reflection, so literally like a mirror. But then there are subcategories, several in each of those two categories, which we're gonna um, look at more specifically. Also do some of the editing, post-production, things like that, so that at the end of this video, you'll be able to create some of those cool images that you see floating around on Instagram. I did just wake up in my hotel room. I'm gonna go down to have breakfast. It is 6 degrees Celsius outside, which is somewhere around above zero, above freezing. So, you know, you, you, you want to dress up pretty well for that. So we had a very hearty, mostly healthy breakfast and we're out walking i decided to walk it's gonna be a long one and a half hour walk to the center but even though these trams are really cute i figured i'd just look around at these wonderful parks i mean there's plenty of nice views along the way i have a map on my phone of all the cool destinations i want to see like picturesque places that i want to take pictures of although we all know what the challenge is for today it's pretty cold like borderline snow but there shouldn't be any precipitation blue skies today so um, off we go. So we seem to be at our first destination. It's a little nice park called Maximi, I do believe, and it seems to be like an extension of the zoo because there are like fancy birds swimming around. So we're gonna do our first type of smartphone shot, which is framing. Now there are also two types of framing because you can do framing of two pictures with the same focal length and framing of two pictures of different focal lengths. I'll show you in a second. You know what, now that we're up close, this building is not that cool, but whatever, we'll go with it. So, phone goes in front, covers your subject, focus on the frame of your phone, like that, snap a pic. Then you take a picture out of your phone, same focal length, snap another pic. So in basic framing, it's really just about um, take making a mask of the screen of the phone and then applying that mask on the second picture that you took of the background. I also blurred a little bit because you know photos are not pixel sharp and then I also tried to blend the contents of the screen with the reflection because in real life a photo like this would have a little bit of the reflection but also the contents of the screen so play a little bit around with the opacity settings to make sure it blends in a little bit and of course my little signature highlights that I took from the light without heat. Now in the case of basic framing with um, two different focal ranges, you pretty much make the picture as small as you can without going out of the borders of the phone. And here's a more extreme one when I went further away and took one with the 50 millimeter and zoomed it in even more. So I'm actually super far. If I was actually taking a picture from here with my phone, it would look super tiny like a tiny little object in the distance but then i put on my 50 mil zoomed it in as much as i could and you get this very object centered picture so that's cool and really easy to do but things are getting really exciting when you start thinking outside of the frame literally now i call this advanced framing because you intentionally have the subject sticking out of the frame of your phone when you take a picture of the phone so snap one snap the other now with advanced framing, you also mask the phone. But the primary difference is that your object is intentionally sticking out a phone. So I would take a brush tool after blurring um, the frame, obviously, and I would start masking the hotel back in. Now you can adjust a little bit because you won't see exactly where the images align or misalign. But the point of the effect is that your subject kind of pops outside of the frame of the phone kind of like you know you were watching a picture and suddenly it came to life that is the effect that we're going for you can do it horizontally as well but ma Ugh, focus masking out the background and blending it later can be a pain 
then you have to find out where to blur the horizon line you know whether you want to include the person or not or the booth or not or the car or not whereas in the sky there's a very clear boundary here you're gonna have to make harder decisions as to what will appear what will pop out of the frame and what will stay as part of the background now for monuments and small buildings you don't have to just hold it like this you can also tilt it back and that will make it look like a 3d model popping out of the phone now here's me holding my phone upright so it just kind of looks like an extension of my screen which is kind of flattish in this case i'm just gonna mask out the stature from the background when you have the sky as a background it's really easy to mask out a subject whereas in this case you have another building in the background so it's a little bit harder but the point of these two pictures is to show that you can tilt your phone backwards and then it gives more of a trippy 3d effect because instead of being like an extension of the screen on the same plane you now have your phone horizontal but your subject vertical so it looks like there's a monument on your phone sticking out of your phone i guess it's really up for interpretation obviously some subjects may work better than others so it's really about playing around and finding um what works for you and if you're careful you can also combine focal length for example take this shot with the 18 the 19 mil and then the shot that will be masked in with the 50 mil so the picture with the phone in it is 19 millimeter but then i took a 50 mil went back a bit and took a more pushed in um picture of the subject and this does make for a much more intriguing shot because to an untrained eye it may look like it's popping that much more out of the picture. I really like how this one turned out. Seriously, some subjects that just work a lot better than others. I like that it's not symmetrical, that the phone is tilted, and then when we start masking out um, the cathedral, it just really looks like it pops out of there. Some, some images just do that. I mean, honestly, I don't have that much experience, so eventually you might be able to do this on purpose, but I don't know, some images just work better than others. And for me, I really wanted to have a shade for some reason, like the other pictures didn't need it so much, but this one really wanted to have a shade, like it's actually coming out of the phone. And I'm really happy with the result that we got here. And the last way is having a horizontal surface, like a street continuing on out of the phone. In this case, I didn't get the chance to do that, but you kind of get the idea where you're holding the street and the street kind of, you know, rolls out of your phone. If you were up on some building looking down, it would sell the effect even more because you have a kind of higher perspective and then it would really look like the road is a continuation of your phone, especially if you line things up size-wise as well. But you get the idea. So now we're in the center of Zagreb and what appears to be its version of Central Park. I think it's called Zrinjevac. And all these little fancy things around is set up here because what I forgot to mention earlier because I just found out tonight is the first night of Croatian Advent. So all this is going to light up with their Christmas decorations and things like that. Counting up, I think, four weeks uh, to Christmas. Okay, let's talk a little bit about reflections. Now, reflections are just that using your phone to reflect a cool part or something that you see. Now getting a full reflection is really difficult. Most of those are photoshopped because your phone is a pretty small surface. It is doable. Right now I put it really close to the lens, try to keep it horizontal and snap a reflection. Then what you can also do is move down and reflect. Move your phone a little bit away from the camera, reflect the important part but then you also want your background to generally be interesting. Now with the handheld shot, it works best if you are in the shade and your subject is lit really well because then it's really obvious. In a case when the area where you are and your subject is roughly lit the same, you may want to brighten your screen a little bit and darken the surroundings just to bring a little bit more attention on the subject. In this case, I even desaturated the grass, gave it a little bit darker shade, just so that center image pops. So we use the flowers to our advantage and create some weird but cool composition. As far as the basic reflection, there's not really much to edit. You know, put on your regular presets and you're good to go. You just got rid of all that annoying grass and weird elements in the front on the ground that you otherwise might not want to have in your shot. Well here's a weird composition I'm playing around with where you kind of have 
that building in the reflection there while still grabbing some of these cool shots here. It's fun to play around with. This was a weird composition, unusual. I've never done something like this before, but the horizon somehow aligned and I think it has a pretty trippy effect. I mean, it's really all about experimenting and just trying your hand at different things until you kind of get a feeling for what you like and don't like and what works for you. And sometimes if you're further away from your subject, some of these compositions just work better. So in this case, for example, I can get both the base of the statue and the statue in the same shot. With the phone on the ground, the most important thing is just to get the right angle so that you can see the subject of the photo, which is inside the phone. But sometimes there are interesting things around. For example, there were pigeons. I was trying to wait for them, lure them to come in. I didn't have any feed for them. But it would be really cool if like there were pigeons around the phone walking around and you see the monument in the center. But I guess we'll grab that later. Well, this is the main square and it's insane. There's like people running everywhere, trams driving across them, people running over the trams musicians playing fountains, children around the fountains in zero degree weather, uh, lots of attractions now around Advent. Pow! Oh yeah, and somewhere high above us is the big cathedral. Well, here's a perfect example of uh, having a low shot combined with a reflection of a high shot. Another basic reflection, there's not really much in editing. Um, you just have to shoot like 20 photos until you get it to align some decently again. Even here, it wasn't perfect. Now there's just a little long exposure I got while I was there. Nothing special, just fun. And this was just a cool um, pick of the contrast between like the commercial market and the very sentimental cathedral in the background. I, I liked it, so. And that's it guys, that's just the basics of using your phone as an accessory. I try to use these tricks as often as possible. Usually it turns out in segments like sometimes I'm fascinated with lens ball then I just want to do regular street photography. Then I want to do a tons of reflections and then I whip out my phone. So I kind of go in phases. Eventually I hope I'm going to start combining them so that you know get a mixture of everything. I'm talking about my Instagram account right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something new, that it was interesting, that it was of value to you. Like this video if you liked it. Comment on your ideas, what you liked, didn't like. Um, feel free to share your work with me. I'd love to see some of it. If you want a critique, I'm happy to do that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm going to see you guys next week when I come back home to Sarajevo. Now, we're going to go for a long trip from Zagreb to Sarajevo, like eight hours.